So I used Code Crafters to build my own kit and I wanted to share my experience with it. Well, the Code Crafters is a platform for experienced engineers that helps you get better by completing advanced code challenges and the challenges include build your own Docker, Redis and other popular dev tools. I think besides improving your skills by practicing building, you also get a deep understanding of these popular tools and the concepts that they are based on, uh, which is also helpful for interviews because, for example, I've gotten tons of questions in the past about Redis. And also if there's a language that you need to brush up your skills on, in my case it's um, Java, um, you can take a challenge in that language. But first let's go over the one that I did, which was build your own kit, and that one I completed in JavaScript. So when you start a challenge, you can pick the language and see which languages that challenge is available in. And afterwards, if you start it in a language, you can always come back and restart with a different one. So the topic of the challenge, as I mentioned, is Git, which is not a simple version control system, uh, but to be able to break down complex systems into smaller concepts and actionable items is a very important skill in engineering, in my opinion. It'll help you in the future, whether you're building an MVP for your product or getting interviewed about system design questions. They might ask you things like, how would you go about building your own Instagram? So to think about Git, uh, what are the key functionalities that in includes? It's adding Git to your project, pushing some code and cloning already existing um, code in the repository in Git, right? So those are three main functionalities that we can identify. Let's take the first one. Uh, what happens when you initialize git? The command, you type in command git um, in it, it creates a, a git directory at the root of the project. And there's also a concept of objects that go inside the git that's covered in like fourth challenge. Now that we have identified these key functionalities that um, git contains and will be implementing. Uh, to start the challenge itself, um, you have to clone the starter repository they have created and push a commit. That way you can work off of the ID of your choice on your computer. And then when you're done with the part, you can uh, push code and then they run the tests on their side to check your code. And after the test, you get logs both in your terminal and inside code crafters as well. And before we go into details of different stages of the challenge, if you want to try a challenge yourself right now, Code Crafters currently has this uh, build your own DNS server, which is free while it's in beta. But if you decide to get their membership, you can do it using my link uh, in the description. It is an affiliate link, but this video is not sponsored. I just want to come in here, talk and show my experience. Also uh, what I learned. So the first stage, as I hinted, is creating a git folder and this is what we'll create inside of it. And if you want to see the full list of when you create, uh, when you run a git in it, what it contains in your directory is here. And I'm also going to share um, this link would be in the video description. And if you have wondered why I've never seen this git folder, maybe in your VS code or the ID that you're using, if you have said that by default, um, it won't show directories that are they start with the dot, it's hidden. But if you change the setti settings, then you'll be able to see. So any repository that ha you have initiated Git, you can go ahead and examine it. But this is what most likely you are going to see. And let's see what, uh, so in here, we're gonna do objects, refs, and heads, and let's examine what um, exactly these uh, three entail. So for the head is the current ref you're looking at. Um, so if you just initiate a repository, it's most likely going to be um, your master branch. And then we have refs, think of this as references that um, uh, live in your repository. Maybe you created um, some changes and you didn't commit, you just save them as a stash. Um, it would be one of them that's saved in refs. Then we have tags, um, other like remote list of remote branches, 
vocal branches and etc. And final thing is this um, objects, which is a list of blobs, and then these blobs are indexed by SHAs. So now what is exactly a blob? Blob represents a, it's like a file like um, data. I think of it as raw and um, it can be read as a text or binary data, but in most cases you convert into a readable stream where you apply methods to like parse it and process the data. And then different languages have different uh, ways of processing this blob object itself. And if you maybe have ever done a file upload feature on your website, for example, like JavaScript's file interface is based off of the blob. So when a user is uploading a file onto the website, what it's um, saved as is a blob. The next keyword here is indexed by SHAs. And what is that? It stands for secure hash algorithm. Um, and then the algorithm is, it contains a series of um, hash functions taking the value and convert this value into a hash value that it's also called digest and it's a fixed sized value um, so it's useful for security a lot of like cryptographic applications use it and so it is used um, also as git to index as in like name your commits for example every commit would have this list of like numbers um, that uniquely identifies it um, so git is able to parse the data it's able to find the data and see for example with this commit what file you changed and etc so it's kind of like a address book for it and to we have a, an example of the code as for the first stage they just want you to uncomment the code to get familiar with the main.js file where you're going to be making changes and also how it works. So you read the command uh, with the process ar uh, arguments and then uh, the index of which argument it is. And then uh, you parse if it's um, in it, the argument, then you call this function, which just basically runs first, it creates a git directory. Um, then inside git it creates objects, then we have uh, refs, and then it uh, creates writes uh, inside this uh, head file, this refs head master um, that I mentioned, the master branch, and just console logs that um, the git directory has been initialized, which then you see in your terminal. After every step you um, commit the changes, you push to ma master, and then the, this will check if the tests have passed. After initiating git directory we have read a blob object and in git we have this command it's called git cat file. Um, so what it is is that you paste this command and then you paste the SHA and it will print out the binary data that the blob contains. And also in, after the description of the ta tasks, it's uh, instructions on how to pass the stage, which I went over. And then there's this JavaScript guide. It's um, generated uh, by AI. Um, so it's not, it might be inaccurate, but also it does provide some useful information. So for example, it talks about the FS module, which is Node.js module that helps you interact with the file system. So for example, when you type in the command, it has to read the blob from your objects directory, right? So you have to read the files and you use that fs functions in JavaScript. Here it has um, fs read file sync. And then it also like this part, uh, it gives us the path. It's hinting us that this blob should be saved in the objects folder. And the way we find the blob is we pass this um, SHA, which I mentioned is the index. And then it also has some instructions as to how to decode the data using this two string met method. Then we pass the type of the decoding. And at the end, we use this process std out uh, function to write out the data. And then my function um, looks pretty similar, which is first I check if the case, the command entered is cat file, then if it is read from the blob where we pass SHA, that is the 
fourth um, argument uh, in the command. So as we can see here, we have one, two, three, and then fourth one is this SHA. Then we take in the argument, we create the path, uh, we read the file inside it, we decode the file, and then we write out the data. Creating the blob object is a um, little bit trickier. So we take in the object and then we store the file inside this object's folder and as a result we uh, print out this uh, 14 character SHA in return to that um, command and also a good thing about um, this while you're like testing your code on before you have pushed is that you get an example of test cases that would be run against your code so you can examine that first uh this one is in go but um i believe it should be showing us the javascript um, and then there's also view code examples where you can see what others have uh, pushed in and it also comes with um, some comments in here uh, for example it's coming from the bot, bot explaining you what others have done and it's a good way to just learn how to read the code other code which is also a very important skill and to get a quicker understanding rather than you having to look up what every single uh, thing means so here for example it's explaining that we create this write blob function mm -hmm. and let's see what it has to say about the function itself is responsible for creating this one and uh, so yeah it checks if there's correct number of arguments and uh, we use we generate the hash of the blob because remember we have to return the hash using the crypto module it is very um, often used uh, module for those like creating hashes and uh, etc and then we uh, take in the data and we decompress it using this um, library and then the function mm, de deflate. Um, we generate the folder and the file, file name of how the uh, blob should be st stored. And um, then we have a helper function that it like um, splits the hash into folder and file component. So this one writes the float and then in the end we write out the blob hash. So I think those are like uh, pretty good explanations and understanding of what's going on. Our next challenge was reading a tree object because um, git we have this ls uh, tree command that would inspect and list and if you add the flag name only it lists uh, the names of the tree elements. So in this case it would be file directory and then also one thing it has it sorts them alphabetically um, in this part the, the part that I got stuck in was the argument that I was passing the tree SHA I was using the wrong index but the logs were also helpful which you can examine them and because I kept getting this error message that the file doesn't exist when I know that in tests the file should be there SHA of which they're passing. Um, so that was a little bit weird, but then I figured out that my argument is wrong. But then I have this um, stages left to write a tree object here, then create a commit and finally clone a repository. And another challenge that I want to share I'm doing is build your own Redis. This one I'm doing in Java. I mentioned that I want to uh, brush up on my skills in Java since it's been a while that I have re written code in it. So it was this was a perfect um, practice to build Redis and then its functionalities like responding to a ping. Then we have multiple pings. Then there's like concurrent clients that are pinging your server. So understanding event loops and etc. And there are also like this concept that was provided inside here that you can like um, brush up on, for example, network protocols is what I needed to understand how Reddit works. And another one was TCP. 
And that will be it for my overview of Code Crafters. And I know my channel is mostly based around WebDev, and lately I've had a lot of Next.js tutorials, but I'm also trying out new different formats, and I do like to share things as I'm going back at it. Java is one of them, so let me know if you're interested concepts in it, and I'll see you in the next video.